We looked at addition and subtraction of polynomials and multiplication and some of those funny special cases of multiplication. But before we look at division of polynomials, we want to look at this case where I might start mixing x's and y's together, more than one variable in a polynomial. So how do they behave? What do they do? How do we evaluate them? Very similar to what we have been doing, but now we just have to be careful to assign the correct constant to the correct variable. So we're going to take a look at this case. Given this polynomial with x's and y's combined, I want to evaluate it when x is negative 2 and y is positive 5. So wherever we see x, we plug in negative 2. Wherever we see y, we plug in 5. So 4 doesn't have anything to plug in. x, its value is negative 2. Again, x is negative 2, y is 5, and I'm squaring that. Adding to that 8, x value is negative 2, y value 5. So wherever we see an x, we plug in negative 2. Wherever we see y, we put in 5. So let's start evaluating in part as we go. What are we looking at? 4 isn't going to change. 3 times negative 2 will give me negative 6. And what am I going to be adding on to that? So I'm adding negative 2, and we have to take care of the power first. So what is 5 squared? 5 times 5 is 25. And what am I adding on to that? 8 times what value? Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 gives me negative 8. And 5 times 5 is 25 times another is 125. So we just have to evaluate in pieces carefully as we're going. So what am I looking at? 4 minus 6. I'm subtracting off 50. And I've got 8 times 8 is 64 times 125. Okay. So let's start combining. I've got 4 and I'm taking away 6. So I'm looking at negative 2. And if I take away another 50, I'm looking at negative 52. And I'm subtracting off of that, this product together is 8,000. So negative 52 minus negative 8,000 is negative 8,052. When we're all done. Okay. So same polynomial, same constants, but different signs. So you're going to be working with the same numbers, so don't let those overwhelm you. You'll just have to watch the signs. Be careful, because now 2 is positive, and 5 is negative on y. So plug those in and see how it changes. So as we start to evaluate, what's going to be different? 4 is still going to stay the same. Now I've got 3 times a positive 2, plus 2 times a negative 5 squared. I'm adding to that 8. 2 squared, oh, excuse me, that's supposed to be cubed, 2 cubed, and negative 5 cubed. Same exact polynomial that we had before, but different values. So what signs are going to change? 4 is staying the same, but I'm adding 6 now, when before I was subtracting, and I'm adding 2 times what value? Negative 5 times negative 5. 25, so I'm adding 50, and what do I get out of here? 8 times 8 times negative 125. So as we're going, I've got 10 and 50 together will give me 60, and I'm adding 8 times 8 is 64 times negative 125. So I've got 60, and I'm taking away 8,000. So what are we left with in the end? Negative 7,940 altogether. So is it significantly different? Yeah, by a good chunk. So those um, negative signs and the parentheses when you're evaluating at the specific variable are very important. So we want to be able to classify these funny polynomials when we have mixed variables. So we need to discuss how do we do that. So the degree of a term is the sum 
of all of the exponents. So if we have mixed variables, we need to combine the exponents on each variable to find the degree of the term. So for example, the degree of 3x to the 5th y squared is going to be what? Adding together 5 and 2, that term has degree 7. Then again, the degree of a polynomial is the degree of the term of highest degree. So the highest power that we can see when we're combining, and if we have mixed terms, is going to be the overall degree of the polynomial. So each of these, we want to take, talk about the term, the coefficient on the term, the degree of that term, and then the overall degree of the polynomial. So what is my first term here? I've got 9x squared y cubed. Second term, again, the sign goes with it. So negative 14x y2, z3. Third term is xy, fourth, 4y, 5x squared, and 7 is the last one. So many. So on each of these pieces, what is the coefficient? So the thing out on the front, the constant on the front of the variables. So the first one, coefficient 9. Second, negative 14. Third, unspoken 1 out on the front. Fourth is 4. Fifth is 5. That's kind of cool. And the sixth is 7. Oops, threw out the pattern. And let's calculate the degree of each term. So we need to sum all of the exponents together. So the degree of the first term, I've got 5. Degree of the second, is it still going to be 5? What is my coefficient, or excuse me, not my coefficient, my power on x here, unspoken 1. So this is degree 6 altogether. Again, I've got a 1 on y and a 1 on x, so that degree is 2. Degree on y is 1, degree on x is 2, and degree of a constant is always 0. So the degree of our overall polynomial highest that we've seen of all of our terms is 6. So it is a polynomial of degree 6. So go ahead and take this next polynomial and do the same. Tell me all the terms, coefficients of every term, the degree of every term, and then the degree of the polynomial overall. So breaking up the pieces, first term, second term, third term, fourth term, it's positive, my bad, and last. Coefficient on the front of each of these. First one, what are we looking at? Four, second one. 7, negative 5, 2, 4, and the degree of each of these terms. So adding together those powers, got a term of degree 4, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 all together. It's probably going to be our winner. Degree 1, degree 1, degree 0. So overall, highest de uh, degree from our term that we can see is 7th. So our overall degree of the polynomial is 7.